How's it going? Pretty good, pretty good. Just driving out to uh, Washington to see my boxing coach. Yeah, how has the training ca camp been for your next fight? Uh, it's been good. Um, pretty aggressive in uh, fight camp right now. Uh, just to make sure that we're getting enough training in uh, for Randy, basically. Uh, with all the COVID restrictions going on, you know, we're, just, we're just trying to get as much as we can get. Yeah. And, you know, 2020 has been so crazy with COVID and all that stuff. How how would you say that your uh, 2020 has gone so far? Uh, it's gone pretty well. Uh, you know, I had a win in February. That was the start of 2020. You know, the COVID thing hit, kind of backed everything up. But uh, other than the COVID, it's been pretty good. Mm -hmm. And with with your last knockout win. Um, I saw that it was overturned by the Texas Commission for a, a marijuana test. What was your reaction to uh, them overturning that fight because of that test? Uh, I mean, Texas is completely retarded. Um, they can count that as a no contest all they want. I'm 10 and 2 in my book, as far as I know. Um, I'm not too sure how that uh, marijuana, you know, gave me that win. But, you know, that's Texas. Like, that, that's Texas. Fuck them, is what I say. Like, I'm from Oregon. It's it's legal here. I can go to the store right now, go grab it if I want to. Um, and I did. I stopped for two weeks before uh, the Texas fight. But uh, obviously that wasn't enough. Um, they have a lower threshold than any other state, which is, again, super retarded. And they, they need to change that. I already told, like, my manager, I'm not fighting there. So that that shit changes because uh, that's that's just retarded. Um, yeah, they shouldn't take away people's wins because that I, a fine, sure, why not do a fine? But you're taking away like people's wins, like for real. Like I worked hard for that win. First off, like I worked a good two months uh, to get that knockout, and it's gonna take it away because I smoke. Doesn't make any sense to me. And I'm pretty sure it doesn't make sense. To me. But that's just my. Opinion. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, marijuana is not a performance-enhancing drug. And, you know, we've seen fighters like Tim Elliott uh, get sus – I think he got suspended for nine months because he took a short nose fight and he got suspended for that. Did you uh, get, like, a suspension for that, or was the punishment no, just overturned? No, they suspended me for three months, a uh, $500 fine, and my win. <laughs> All that. You know, just all that. And I think I was, you know, it wasn't even like a big threshold that I was at. Um, it was just like right above that line of no, no. So, like, you took all that away from me plus $500. Like, it, it just doesn't make any sense. Even now, I'm still kind of pissed about it. But, like I said, uh, I'm, I'm 10 and 2 as far as I know. UFC has that, has it at 9, 2, and 1, which is fine. But that's, mm -hmm. that's not my that's not my record. From I'm the one in there, you know. I, that's me in there. That's that's no one else. It's not Texas. It's not UFC. That's me in there. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm ten and two. Yeah. And how did it feel to get your first one in the UFC? Because Domingo Pilarte, like I saw the height difference. Uh, I think you're five and five at uh, five five, and then he's six foot. Do um, you think people were counting you out because of the height difference? Yeah. Leading pretty, up to that fight. Me out. Yeah. Um, I have a bunch of long guys at the gym, so I'm kind of used to the, to the reach advantage. I'm always um, either coming in or coming in or going out. Uh, the reach was like a problem, obviously. Like that dude had like seven inches on me and um, seven inch height. You know, like there's a significant amount of reach and height against me in that fight and. Uh, we had a we had a game plan of you know low kicks right hand, but as soon as that dude walked into cage, like I immediately switched it and was like, we're not kicking this dude. Like if I if I touch that dude's leg, he's gonna just throw that two that long two straight at me. So um, I was more focused on boxing in that fight. Um, so when he was coming forward, um, I basically moved my head to the side and gave him that overhand right. 
But uh, the game plan kind of switched up as soon as you walked in that cage. But, I mean, I'm just going to have to get used to it. There's a lot of long guys in my division, um, long, linky guys in my division. And even Randy, like, normal size, but he has a few inches uh, of reach and height. So we're, we're, we're still playing the uh, – we're still playing pretty comfortable with the reach and height. I'm not too worried about an advantage I'm losing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're set to fight Randy Costa on September 26th. Of, what do you think of him as an opponent? Um, he looks like a pretty good opponent. Um, all around good. I'm not too sure about his uh, Jits game, but I'm from a jiu-jitsu background, so I'm pretty comfortable. If it gets caught on the ground. Um, but I'm preparing for him just like any other fight. There's nothing really different that I'm doing. I try to stay uh, the same fight camp. Whatever's working, you know, I'm not going to change it. Yeah. And uh, do you have a certain prediction for how that fight goes down? Uh, not really. I, I, I play it by ear every single time. If I get an opportunity... I see an opening, then I'm definitely going to take it. Yeah. And, you know, let's say you make a quick work of Randy Costa. Let's say that you get out of that five, like, uh, get out of that fight unscathed. Uh, how many fights do you want to have in 2020? And when would you like to come back to the cage? Uh, I like one more before the, before the year's over. Uh, three fights, three fights a year is okay. Um, but with the COVID thing kind of popped off, like that, that sucked. And like, I'm pretty sure it got into a lot of people's way. But after this fight, if I can get a fight in November, December, that'd be cool. I'll, I'll be down for that. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, with the COVID situation, like, uh, you know, it came in March. Uh, how how long did you have to go without a gym for? Or did you secretly sneak in uh, gym sessions every now and then? Yeah, I, have, I mean, I have a gym to the uh, gym key to my gym, so... Uh, there wasn't really any stoppage in, you know, since the last fight, probably like February, I took a couple weeks off because, uh, I had a, uh, fracture and then other than that, I was, I was back into uh, most, most of the time by myself, but I mean, now that we got this fight lined up, um, we're start. We, we, we picked up training quite a bit, so I'm feeling pretty comfortable on fight camp. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, and you know this is a UFC's fourth month uh, that they've put on without fans in attendance. Does that like does fighting in an empty arena like affect you at all? We'll see. I have no idea. Like it looks weird on camera, and when I'm watching UFC events, I don't know if any other fighters had a problem with that or not. Um, I know that we'll be able to hear each other's coaches, you know, that, so it's just going to be weird. Uh, it should be just like, you know, in the gym, you know, it's just us and the coaches. So I, I assume it should be that gym type feel where there is no audience and probably it's better, honestly, because I'm not too much of a, an audience type of guy. So this, this might work out in my favor more than anything. Yeah. And you know, looking at your division, it, your division is probably like one of the most stacked in the UFC right now. You know, we have Sterling, Jan, uh, Cody Garbrandt. Is there any names like on the top of the division that you look to fight someday? Or like, is there like a dream fight that you want in the future? Uh, dream fight? No, not really. Um, everybody seems to be uh you know, the top of their game in the Bantamweight division. It's a tough pull, for sure. Um, if Cejudo ever came back, that would be, like, a fight that I want. He seems like a cool guy, but, man, he's so arrogant. I, don't, uh, I just don't like that. If you're going to be a champ, you know, be, be a humble champ. But, you know, if you're going to act like the way he, he acts, you're going to have a bunch of dogs looking at you. And yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm in the, you know, bottom of the pole here. But I'm still looking at him like, mm, you're champ now, but still. So that would be like kind of a cool like dream fight to have. I'm not sure if I'd win it, but <laughs> 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 but it'd be cool to fight Anderson. But I know he's retired now. 
Yeah. Do you think he ever comes back? Or do you think, like, do you think a lot of people are saying that retirement was a, like an act to get more money? But do you think he'll fight again? Yeah, I assume he will. Like, all the fighters, it seems like a lot of fighters are doing that, um, saying that they're retired, but come back. Um, I assume it's that itch. Like, they see other fighters fight, so they want to, you know, get right back in there and we'll see how long he stays out for. I assume he's still training. Um, for him to just stop, I don't know if that was a. Uh, planned or not, but I think he's going to come back. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't. Or if he did. I wouldn't be surprised if he did come back. Mm -hmm. And with, uh, you know, the bandway division, how many more wins do you think you need to uh, get in the top 15 rankings? Do you think a win over Costa might launch you into the top 15? Uh, probably not. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that put me in the top 15. There's a lot of there's a lot of dudes in my uh, division for sure. Um, that just depends. It just depends on how this, this Randy, uh, Randy Costa fight goes and uh, how other fights go in the future. Uh, I know Ricky Ricky Simon's fighting uh, September, like right, right, right before me. So, and I think he is in the top fifteen. How he's not in the top ten is insane. Like, I, I don't yeah, for sure. My boxing coach about that, like how Ricky's not in top ten is, it, it's kind of crazy. But you know, I don't. We don't do the rankings. That's that's other people. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, speaking of the rankings, uh, I think Sean O'Malley he uh, he got dropped off the rankings after his loss to Tito Vera. What did you think of that fight? Uh, man, Vera's a dog, man. Like <laughs> you just can't call out dogs like that. And that that ankle. I'm pretty sure that that was, like, uh, planned, you know, kicking that ankle, that low ankle kick. You see uh, Brent Primus did that. Uh, in oh, Bell with Michael Chandler, yeah. Yeah, like, dude, that works. Like, kick that, that leg down and you start to tumble, you'll break your shit. So, it was a good game plan I think he had uh, going for that ankle. I mean, he has a long – Sean O'Malley has a long, like, stance, so it's an easy target. So uh, for him, for him to drop rankings, though, I don't know how much he drops rankings, but hopefully it wasn't you know a lot, you know, because he has done a lot for the sport. Um, so I hope he didn't drop too much. I always try to be fair when it comes to rankings and fighters, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, you know, like. Oh, like what? What job? Sorry. What job or career would you pursue if you weren't doing MMA? Uh, pro probably firefighting. Honestly, I I would assume like firefighting. I'm scared as shit as fire, so like that would probably be the the next best thing to go after. I always try to go after shit that I'm un uncomfortable with, and. You know, I joined my my gym probably like twelve years ago, and that was just because I wanted to learn how to protect myself. And then I learned about MMA after I did like a couple years of jujitsu. And oh, uh, as a as a kid, I always you know kind of scared to fight other people. And I grew up in a rough neighborhood, so like going into that scenario and kind of thinking like as an amateur, like oh, I want to fight and um, you know try to try to get this type of fear out of my system um it's basically how i you know how i live my life basically just try to do shit that freaks me the fuck out more than anything and try and stay in that calm environment uh while you know i'm in a constant state of fear so i assume firefighting would be like the dopest thing to do besides mma yeah and, you know, like, uh, I guess you would be like another CJ Miocic, you know, f fighting fires and then fighting uh, fighting guys on the other end. Yeah. I, uh, doesn't Stipe do both? I'm in an interview right now. Yeah. Yeah, I believe he does. And uh, it, it's it's cool to see him fighting fires and fighting guys on the other hand. So, like, for him to be doing both is just insane. Yeah, that's that's pretty cool, man. That's That's insane, like. You have to have, like, some type of different type of energy or be 
be more of a human than to do both. Like that's in, that's insane. I couldn't imagine doing that. That's a lot of work. You know how old is he too? He's like he's getting up there too, right? I can't. Yeah, I, can't I think remember. he's. I think he's around like maybe thirty five, thirty six. Because I know that DC is not that much older than him. Yeah, like I mean, he's he's getting after it, dude. Like for sure. And I assume like even after my career is over with with the uh, MMA, UFC all together, like I probably go do some firework, uh, fire, um, fire stuff, just a uh, volunteer or something. Um, I've been looking to do that. And I'll probably might get into, I'll, I'll look into that, like, after this fight or whatever. But things kind of slow down with COVID, so I couldn't really do anything with it. But volunteer firefighting would be pretty cool, at least to, like, get the boat going, you know? Yeah, for sure. And, uh, you know, I think that's all the questions I have. Uh, I just want to say, like, I appreciate you a lot for uh, taking the time out of your day to come on. Uh, is there anything that you want to say to the people out there watching? Um, just stay tuned on September 19th, because it's going to be a fucking show. <laughs> well, thanks, Trinity. I appreciate you very much, and I'm looking forward to seeing your fight. Thanks, man. I appreciate you.